Good evening and welcome to the August 24th City Council meeting. I now call the meeting to order and would you please uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilors, does anyone wish to remove an item or is there a motion to approve the consent docket? Motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. And the consent docket is approved with a vote of four to zero. I do, I need to take this time to say that Councilor Darlington, uh, Vice Mayor Darlington had a scheduled uh, outing and she can't be here tonight uh, so we will just have to get along without her tonight that moves us to public comment on agenda items not scheduled and we don't have anything for that so now we move to public hearings <laughs> Received public comment regarding a request for a special use permit for placement of an electronic sign at 2324 East 6th Avenue, CC-15-107. Mr. Dorman, did we have good notice on this? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Galloway. Yes, um, I'd like to have uh, our planner, Aaron Baggerly, present the report, please. Thank you, City Manager Galloway. Uh, Mayor and Council, Aaron Baggerly with Development Service here to uh, discuss with you a specific use permit. We had not had one of these in a while, so uh, it's about time we uh, worked on this. Uh, the specific use permit that is on the agenda tonight is for an electronic sign adjacent to residential zoning. So it states uh, in order to have electronic message sign uh, adjacent to uh, residential zoning, we have to come for a specific use permit. Here is a uh, Aerial photo of the uh, property here outlined in red. This is out on East 6th Avenue, 2324 is the address. It is an automotive shop. And across the street is a RMH zoning, residential mobile home zoning. And this is a reason that we're here for the specific use permit because it is technically adjacent to residential zoning. Uh, here's a part of the sign dimensions. Um, it is five foot wide and approximately seven and a half feet tall. Um, our code states that if this, the electronic sign portion has to be under 40% of the total sign area, we're at 29% with the sign. This sign is part of the uh, sign application. This is the one that they uh, submitted to us for approval once this is, is approved or denied. Uh, findings, uh, planning commission findings was an SUP is required when the property is adjacent to residential. The electronic message portion of the sign is less than the maximum 40%. And as you have in your packets, the mobile home uh, park manager across the street uh, submitted a letter and does not oppose the electronic sign. He supports it. Does the mayor or council have any questions for staff at this point? No, sir. No, ma'am. Okay, I will open the public hearing and we have one request from Mr. Roger Ghost. Goes from 13 East State. Just, you got any questions about it? One of the processes we've got to do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I will close the public hearing. <clears throat> Staff is so you gave us the recommend. No, is there a recommendation? Planning Commission recommended approval for the uh, specific use permit. Councilors, any questions for staff? Thank you very much. All right, any discussion? Is there a motion? I move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve CC-15-107. Please vote. And that is approved with a vote of four to zero. Takes us to general orders. Mr. Galloway, fourth quarter financial report, CC-15-102. Yes, um, you were used to having quarterly reports from Marcy Lamb, who has 
left us, and she's now in Texas. Uh, we are in the process of searching for a CFO, but uh, in the meantime, Tammy Brown has been with the Finance Department for a long time. A lot of confidence in uh, Tammy, and she's currently uh, been appointed as Acting Finance Director. So, Tammy, I'd like for you to present the financial report, please. Um, I provided an updated um, report for you. The one that was out on the um, website had an additional um, chart that was in there whenever we did some um, changing of the headings. It pulled in an extra link. So <coughs> additional information in there that you didn't really need because it was from an old report. So, um, just a general overview. Um, this is an unaudited report. We're still in the process of, of doing our final accruals for the year. So um, the numbers in this report may not be exactly the same as what is in our um, published financial report. But this will give you a good overview of, of kind of how we ended up in the year. Highlights, um, the revenues were slightly under what we estimated. But I think as part of um, good communication with the managers during the year, our departments also kept their expenses under control. So it, you know, we, we had less revenues coming in, but we were also able to keep our expenses under control. That's a very broad highlight, and if you guys have any questions. Where are we at on hotel motel tax or use tax, I guess? Excuse me? Where are we at on hotel motel tax? I've hotel motel down. tax was one of the tax or was one of the areas that was down that year. What did we project to this point? And um, we projected last year a million dollars. I believe our final was uh, seven hundred and eighty thousand. If I remember right. It's about three hundred. We projected as eight hundred thousand for the current fiscal year. And where are we at? Um, we only have one month in okay. for the current year, and it was slightly down over the previous year. Okay. Any other questions, counselors? No. Mr. Dorman, we uh, don't vote. This was just a report. Right. You, you don't have to take the next one. It's just a quarterly report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, I am going to, uh, we're going to go out of order here. I am going to go down to number 10, which is ordinances. We're going to go through the ordinances first, go back to resolutions. So, ordinances on first reading. Ordinance number 3321, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending Chapter 23, Land Development Code, Article 6, Land Use Classifications, Division 3, Residential Districts, by creating section 23144 NTZ neighborhood transition zone. Discussion. Motion to advance. Second. We have a motion and a second to advance. Ordinance number 3321 to second reading. Please vote. And that motion passes with a vote of four to zero and th ordinance three three two one advances to second reading next on first reading ordinance number three three two three mr dorman an ordinance rezoning attractive land located at 2000 east airport road from ig general industrial district to p public district discussion motion to advance second we have a motion and a second to advance ordinance number 3323 to second reading. Please vote. And that passes with a vote of four to zero. Ordinance number 3323 advances to a second reading. Next on first <coughs> reading, ordinance number 3324, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance rezoning attractive land located at 799 East Mercury Avenue from IG General Industrial District to CS Commercial Shopping District. Discussion. Motion advance. Second. We have a motion and a second to advance ordinance number 3324 to second reading. And that motion passes with a vote of four to zero. And three three ordinance three three two four advances to second reading. 
That moves us to second readings, ordinance number 3316, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending chapter 31, municipal report, article two, jury trials, amending section 3177, compensation of jurors. Discussion. Um, could you go over this again, review this again? I, I'm not remembering this. Uh, this is, authorizes the city to pay jurors in uh, jury trials in municipal court and establishes the rate under which they are paid. Uh, the, the statutes have been changed in the past couple of years and we needed to catch up our existing ordinance because uh, we had no mechanism to pay them. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3316. Please vote. And ordinance number 3316 passes with a vote of, is adopted with a vote of four to zero. On second reading, ordinance number 3317, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance rezoning tracts of land located at 401 and 403 North Duncan Street and 202 West Hall of Fame Avenue from RT to Family Residential District, the CS Commercial <coughs> Shopping District. Counselors, discussion? Let's shut up. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3317. Please vote. And ordinance number 3317 is adopted with a vote of four to zero. On second reading, ordinance number 3318, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance rezoning tracts of land located at 721, 805, and 809 East Virginia Avenue from RSS, small lot, single family residential district to CS commercial shopping district. Counselors, discussion? Motion to adopt. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3318. Please vote. And ordinance number 3318 is adopted with a vote of four to zero. On second reading, ordinance number 3319, Mr. Dorman. Ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending chapter 23, Land Development Code, Article 8, Parking and Loading Standards, Division 1, generally, section 23-2-11, Design Standards. Discussion. Motion. Motion to adopt. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3319. Please vote. And ordinance number 3319 is adopted with a vote of 420. On second reading, ordinance number 3320, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Stillwater by amending Chapter 23, Land Development Code, Article 17, Required Improvements, Division 3, Improvements. Section 23356, sidewalks. Counselors, any discussion or a motion? Let's shut up. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3320. Please vote. Ordinance number 3320 is adopted with a vote of four to zero. On second reading, ordinance number 3322, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Stillwater by amending Chapter 39, Taxation, Article 3, Sales and Use Tax, Division 6, Transportation Sales Tax, to create 2016 Transportation Sales Tax, levying a sales tax of one half of 1%, providing an effective date, designating projects and improvements on which revenues can be expended, and providing for expiration of the tax levy by amending section 39238 citation, section 39239 tax levy, section 39240 in addition to other taxes, section 39241 subsisting state permits, section 39242 effective date, section 39243 <coughs> revenues, section 39244 duration of tax, section 39245 amendments, and section 39246 provisions cumulative. Counselors, discussion. <coughs> no discussion. Shaking your head no? No, no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Motion. Motion to adopt. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3322. Please vote. 
And ordinance number 3322 is adopted with a vote of four to zero. Now we're going to move back to resolutions, which is item number nine. Resolution CC-2015-17, a resolution proposing adoption of ordinance number 3322, amending the Stillwater Municipal Code by amending chapter 39, taxation, article three, sales and use tax, division six, transportation sales tax, to create the 2016 transportation sales tax, levying a sales tax of one half of 1%, providing an effective date, designating projects and improvements on which revenues can be expended, and providing for expiration of the tax levy, and authorizing the mayor to sign and issue an election proclamation calling for a special, a special election in the city of Stillwater. Mr. Galloway or Mr. Dorman? Yeah, Mr. Dorman prepared the resolution. Again, uh, the, um, the ordinance that you passed is a simple straightforward 10-year extension of the transportation tax for the same like purposes that uh, we have been using it for. It's for infrastructure, hard uh, substance, not for services or programs. Um, the, uh, with the adoption of the ordinance, uh, Mr. Dorman's prepared a resolution to give the county board sufficient notice according to state statute, and I believe this would be the second Tuesday in November. Is that correct? Yes, November 10th, I believe. November the 10th. So uh, we'd recommend approval of the resolution. That would set the date uh, for that November 10th election. And um, I've already I've sent some information to the council to be some more. We've been begin to prepare uh, informational information. We want everybody in the city to, you know, we're not going to campaign which way to vote, but people need to have the information, what the tax is, how it works, what it's done, what it will do. And uh, should you pass this resolution, we'll probably start that process tomorrow getting the word out and just for the record the only difference in the ordinance today and the ordinance in, in the existing ordinance that we have right now is the existing ordinance had specific projects in it and what we basically did was we went through and removed the specific projects and we we, we substituted that with purposes that are already in the ordinance we clarified that and you can you can see there's basically three categories of purposes for which it may be used and then there are uh, the additional areas where the tax is also authorized, which is essentially a mirror image of what we had. We cleaned that language up a little bit too. But uh, as, as the city manager says, this is essentially an a, a extension of the existing sales tax. Other than that, the, the effective date, is, or excuse me, the uh, final date of the tax is, is also changed to, I believe it's 2026. Uh, ten, it's a 10-year uh, term on that, and so we made an adjustment on it. And Otherwise, just because the numbering was changed in the recodification, which required us to have all of the sections in, it's virtually identical. Okay, and we made the deadline, so this... Yes, ma'am, we're good to go. Okay, and when was the deadline? September, 1st of September? We actually had to have it by September 10th, okay. so we have a little bit of breathing room. But okay. uh, if once this is approved, uh, we hand carry this to the election board. So. There's no room for error. Okay, great. <laughs> Counselors, any discussion? I just wanted to clarify by taking out and crossing out the specific jobs or projects and broadening it, does that help when we think about the next 10 years being able to prioritize what it is we're going to be doing? Or yeah, I think um, the, the, first, the first time this pa the tax was passed in 2001, it was a five year. And there was a, a list of specific projects that the people voted for. Um, during that five year period, those, those projects cost much more than anticipated, and so they didn't all get finished. So when we renewed the tax, it was the remaining projects that were originally uh, listed that we carried forward into the next one. We're finding out that as you go, we, don't, we never can tell exactly what a project's gonna cost. Uh, and, as you've heard uh, Dr. Peak talk about our assessment of our streets and, and there's different growth patterns we don't have a crystal ball we can't tell you six years from now which street project is going to be the most important to the community so we think that the flexibility needs to be in there so we can evaluate the pavement management program the the step program and growth in our community and, and best apply these but it's still restricted to transportation enhancement projects only so um, I heard you say something purpose. about uh, it's not, it's for transportation 
projects not serviced? Could you explain well, that? It, it, we, <clears throat> in the transport, the, the use of this tax was always intended, and, and the intent is still to build things, to build either streets, uh, to build traffic signal lights, to install traffic signs, to install crosswalks, to install sidewalks, to um, mark streets, to mark bicycle lanes, anything that has to do with transportation that's actually a cost of material and labor to put something physically in place to enhance the transportation system. It's not intended to hire staff to direct traffic. It's not uh, intended to hire staff to drive people around. It's, I mean, it's not, we wouldn't, we wouldn't create any kind of a service program with it. This is strictly making improvements to the physical transportation system. Does that clarify that a little bit? You know, one, another argument for <clears throat> maintaining flexibility is we never know as a city when we're going to get an opportunity for matching funds from right. you know, the state, the county, whenever, and we need to have some flexibility so that we can respond when those opportunities come up. It's very true. I met with the <clears throat> our district engineer today, and I met with the Secretary of Transportation earlier this week, and we're talking about and the state puts together continually an eight-year plan, and, and we're not certain what's going in that plan that we may be eligible for. We're, we're investigating those, but it's, a, it's an excellent point. And it's, um, have that flexibility can mean a lot of extra dollars for the community when the opportunities come along. <coughs> Anytime you're eligible for extra dollars, yes, I think we it's like worth that. Exploring. <laughs> yes. Like getting two for one <laughs> yes. or more. Well, it's nice to see we paid attention for the first 10 years what, what was good and yeah. made the adjustments to look forward for the next. So, And this expires? Uh, September 2016, and this having this, <clears throat> uh, if the voters pass this in November, it will just be seamless. The day that the existing one expires and then the next day the new one goes in place, which is exactly the same. It makes it continuous. Correct, Mr. Norman? That's correct. Okay. Anything else, Councilors? Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution CC-2015-17. Please vote. And that motion passes with a vote of four to zero on CC dash resolution CC dash two zero one five dash one seven. All right, that moves us to reports from officers and boards. Mr. Gorman. Uh, I have a request for an executive session on listed on the agenda. I would withdraw that request tonight and otherwise I have nothing else to report. Good enough. Mr. Gallivan. Uh, I've already mentioned it. I was, I was going to mention after you passed the resolution that we are gearing up to get information about the kinds of questions you were asking tonight, how the penny half cent will be used and can be used, and so we'll, uh, we'll start getting that information out, social media, website, newspapers, speaking engagements, everything we can possibly think of, so anyone who wants to know will have the information. And if there are civic groups out there that would like someone to come and speak with them Absolutely. about this, please contact the city, Absolutely. contact one of us, and we will uh, make sure you get a speaker who is knowledgeable about all of this. And uh, Absolutely. Sure we need thing. you to help us educate. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Galloway? That's all. Awesome. City Council? <clears throat> Any discussion? Any? Okay. So um, who has radio tomorrow? Me. On radio, 8:15, and then we also have some news to read. Councilor Nahar, you want to start? Sure. Ooh, okay. Let's see. We would like to thank this. We would like to thank the Stillwater Fire Department for being at the elementary schools last week, reminding drivers to slow down and watch for kids. Please watch for all of the school zones. Absolutely. And I would like to remind service groups and civic organizations that the city has a speakers bureau. So if you need a speaker for a meeting, please contact City Hall to schedule a presentation on all aspects of city government and its services. Well, you just repeated I can be on the radio. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just repeated what yeah, you Yeah, that's I, good. That's well, good. Sorry. Um, 
Madam Speaker, is the not? Just read what I'm getting. I didn't know this, so this is good for me to read. Um, for all of our new residents, um, you can schedule the pickup of your moving boxes and other packing materials that you have left over. Some fees may apply, but discuss it with a customer service representative when scheduling your pickup. So I didn't know that. Very good. And then we'd like to thank the Stillwater News Press readers for voting for the city in the Reader's Choice Awards, and I always like reading these. So it's exciting that Boomer Blast got an honorable men recommendation for local event and festival. The Arts Festival got second place, local event and festival. And Couch Park got an honorable recommendation place to take the kids. Okay. All fun events. Okay, and finally, Stillwater has, was listed as one of the top 25 places to retire in the U.S. by Money Magazine. Stillwater was also one of the runner-ups in the golf lovers retirement category, so that's always good to hear. And finally, just welcome students. We're so glad everybody's back, and uh, it's, it's just uh, the town's more alive when the students are here. I forgot one thing, and uh, Councilor uh, Zanotti reminded me. We're we'll also be watching for some information. We had an unusual storm, a lot of limbs, a lot of cleanup stuff. We will be getting information out. We're going to be out doing some special pickups. Uh, when we have a storm like that, we try to help residential out on some businesses. We've got some material. So be patient and watch for the information. We're going to come out and get it. And good job all the linemen who went out and turned our services yeah. back on on Saturday. I know that they were Great called job. early in the morning and uh, I know I was one of the ones affected, so thank you very much, uh, Stillwater Electric and the linemen, specifically. Okay, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn the City Council meeting? So moved. Second. second. A second to adjourn City Council. <clears throat> and that passes with a vote of 4 to 0. We are adjourned at 557 for City Council. And I call to order the Stillwater Utilities Authority meeting for August 24th. Council trustees, do you have, any, does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent docket? I would make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. <coughs> and the consent docket is approved with a vote of four to zero. Reports from officers and boards, Mr. Galloway? Nothing further. Mr. Dorman? Nothing to report, ma'am. Trustees? Uh, Mayor? Yes? One thing I should have mentioned in the other session, uh, I would like uh, the city attorney to, at a future meeting, give us a brief on what, Oklahoma, what, were the, what was the value of Oklahoma City passing their ordinance on texting, the pros and the cons. Why would they do that when the states got a you know a law that's about to come into effect and so if you would just review for us you know the pros and cons of that that would be appreciated good point and i had the same question okay is there uh with nothing further is there a motion to adjourn stillwater utilities authority so moved second a motion and a second to adjourn, uh, adjourn. stillwater utilities authority please vote And Stillwater Utilities Authority is adjourned at 558. Wow. <laughs> that takes us to Stillwater Economic Development Authority meeting. I call the Stillwater Economic Development Authority meeting to order. Trustees, does anyone wish to remove an item from the consent docket or is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the consent docket. And the consent docket is approved with a vote of four to zero. <clears throat> that takes us to general orders, Mr. Galloway. Okay, uh, first item, um, most of you are aware that uh, at the beginning of this calendar year, we, we embarked kind of on a new, new chapter in, in tourism. We have contracted with a brand new company in our community, Red Dirt uh, DMO uh, Incorporated. Uh, this evening, their executive director, Christy Morrison, is here to give you a contract report on the progress of the contract. Ms. Morrison. Thank you. Thank you very much. Put this up there. There we go. 
Thanks again. Once again, I'm Christy Morrison, representing Stillwater's Destination Marketing Organization. We're very excited to be here, have the opportunity to address the council and talk a little bit about the impact that we've made on Stillwater as far as visitor development goes and, on our, and therefore on our economy. Uh, I know you received a very lengthy report. Uh, part of that is just because, um, you know, we, we do a lot of in terms of marketing and advertising. So just as the first report that we've been able to give to you guys in quite a while, wanted to show you an example of it. The very first part of that is typically what a destination marketing organization would probably provide in terms of rooms. In fact, I wanted to mention just briefly, uh, Councilor Nahara, that over the past two years, it's been very unusual that every hotel has submitted the hotel tax that they collect from their visitors and submit it to the city um, on the month that it's due. So it's uh, actually, and I'm not sure the numbers that Tammy provided you, but when I received them, we were still behind two payments. So it's very challenging to compare month to month, year to year, when they're not always submitted on time. So I think that'll make a little bit of a difference, and I'll probably mention that here in a little bit. But I think one of the main asked questions we've been asked over the past year or so has been in terms of the hotels in Stillwater. We'll mention that we currently have 14 properties with 1,000, um, 1,122 rooms, which is the first 15 years I had the job, we had right at about 700 hotel rooms. So there's definitely been a change over the past five years. For those who are familiar with campus, uh, the Atherton Hotel at OSU went offline back in May, had uh, 81 rooms. It's going to come back online, hopefully, with before the end of the year, maybe right after the first of the year, but with 12 fewer rooms. But it's uh, going to be a completely different property with a lot more amenities, which is something I think a lot of the traveling public is going to be excited to see. The Hampton Inn West, which is out on Country Club Road, is going to add 88 rooms to our hotel inventory. The Comfort Inn and Suites located on North Perkins Road is going to add 65 rooms. It's going to bring 17 properties and 1,344 hotel room properties to, excuse me, to our, to our total hotel inventory, which is going to be great. It'll allow us to be able to bid on some events and some groups that we haven't been able to in the past. We're excited about that. For those who aren't necessarily involved in the destination, destination marketing industry, a may or may not know what a Smith Travel Report is. We call it a STAR Report for short, but it's a great report that allows us to compare ourselves to our competitive and our comparable sets. Uh, they collect all the information for us, and so that information is, in fact, on the month. So it's, it's easier to be able to attract it, attract, or I'm sorry, to compare it uh, on a monthly basis and on an annual basis and then also allows us to compare occupancy, average daily rate, and revenue per available room, which is the three major things that we look at in the hotel industry. Uh, because of a lot of things over the last uh, particularly 18 months to two years in this part of the country, a lot of things that have occurred within certain industries that we did not have any control over. Uh, obviously, Stillwater was blessed with a, a brief, I guess, lived oil boom. Of course, as a result of that, we are also in the process of rekindling a lot of relationships for business that we lost as a result of that because we had been hosting annual events for many, many years and because of a lack of availability, they had to leave Stillwater. So now we're in the process of getting those back. Also, I will say um, that uh, we don't have control over a football schedule or on a time of play or television and we certainly don't have a lot of control over performance and all of those have a big impact on our on our economy uh, in regard to different OSU athletic events and so does a lot of the high school football games the number of home football games that we host as well but over the last six years we've We've averaged very high, in fact, we've averaged very high com in comparison to our comparable communities, and I don't think anybody's going to find it a big shock that our average daily rate, revenue per available room, and total revenue are the highest in the month of May, due in great part to Calf Fry, to OSU graduation, and to uh, the Special Olympic Summer Games. Recent awards that my team has been recognized with, we've been very excited. These are awards that are bestowed upon us by our local tourism or our statewide tourism industry but most of the um, the folks that judge these awards are outside of the state of Oklahoma so really in a way we kind of thought that was even more special because they weren't necessarily aware of what we do on a daily basis so we're excited about that 
Uh, the Visitor Information Center, I cannot believe the traffic that we are seeing in there and it continues to increase. One thing I have to tell you that we did not anticipate was the number of local residents that are utilizing that facility. Uh, when you have a lot of people on campus that are looking at faculty and staff, and on a Friday afternoon at 4.45, forgot to come pick up the stuff for the folks that are gonna fly in over the weekend and be there first thing on a Monday. They have all weekend to come pick up what they want. They oftentimes know how to get a hold of us. So having that facility open 24 seven has made a big difference. One thing that we kind of crack up about is um, we actually installed uh, mechanisms on all the doors so you're not, you're not necessarily being recorded all the time but we are being a, we are able to track how many people come in the east door the west door and the main door then we divided it in half and then we even took out some more recognizing that we sometimes use that door but there are so many people that come in and uh, we've noticed that when we are there after hours on the weekend it's almost like a car dealership if you walk out and see if anybody needs needs any help, it's like deer in headlights. They don't want any help, they just want to look. So uh, we've kind of kind of worked our way through that, but we've had just in the past couple weeks, people in from seven different countries and many different states. So we're very excited to uh, be the first influence, I guess people have of our local community and be as helpful as possible. Uh, marketing and communications, obviously anything that we do as in regard to social media is gonna be to direct people to our website. We also launched a, a brand new smartphone app. Very, it's free, you can go to visit Stillwater or visit Stillwater. We already have over 3,000 users of that app. We love it. It's very, very convenient, particularly when we can send push notifications. Um, we love musicians, we love, love live music. They're the worst about letting us know when they're gonna be performing. So when we find out at the last minute there's a big name in town, we can push that out to everybody and really, and then it gets, it uh, kind of spreads like wildfire, so we're really excited about that. Uh, marketing and communication highlights over the past six months. Uh, we've, we ran over three, 30 print advertisements, reaching over two million readers. That's everything from these national publications to regional publications, statewide publications, and, and local as well. <clears throat> then as far as sales and services, that part of our organization, uh, what some of the uh, services that we provide are obviously visitor guides, visitor bags, we'll provide marketing services, public relations services, we'll help people write press releases, make sure that they can get on TV, on radio, uh, that their information is provided to the print media. Uh, for the groups that we helped block their hotel room blocks and get their meeting space, that was over 10,000 visitors with over $4 million in direct visitor spending. We do not use a multiplier, we're just I, those make me nervous so that's what we're anticipating at $75 for day visitors $200 a night for overnight visitors and then you have been approving um, visitor incentive grants to get to start up new events and to help those that are one to three year events and to continue events that have been consistently successful for our community and for the events that you have approved that took place January 1 to June 30th that was seven different events for a total investment of $19,000. And just from those seven grants, it brought in over 21,000 visitors with an estimated visitor impact of over a million dollars. Um, and once again, the numbers I gave you earlier are a little bit easier for us to track because those are events that have happened for a certain period of time. These are new events, and so a lot of those, as of now, are still estimated. We haven't received a lot of the follow-up information to be able to provide you actuals but we thought that was pretty pretty excellent return on investment. And then we're really excited. We, I hope at this time next year, I'm reporting to you that we have applied through Destination Marketing Association International for our accreditation. It's a very lengthy, very rigorous pro, pro, uh, program, but uh, something I think we should do. We'd be the first DMO in the state of Oklahoma to receive that very small compared to many that go through this undertaking, but I think that we're there. And as long as we are able to apply best practices, I don't think it'll be a problem for us to be able to report that we were awarded that at our, at our report next year. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. I liked the written report. I like this report even better. Easy, very easy to understand. Looking forward to hearing about your accreditation success. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Good luck with that. Great, yeah. Thank you. Great. 
so people can just come into your offices 24 hours a day, seven days a week, revolving door. The, the front portion, the vestibule yeah. in the yeah. front mm -hmm. is open. Um, we've had that open. It's only closed twice in the past uh, four years. Very specific requests during specific football games. And one other request um, from the Stillwater PD. But we have not had any Great. incidents whatsoever other than just a lot more information showing up and that's good yeah. one thing that we're noticing too is you have to assume that a visitor into Stillwater does not know that your business exists so what better place for a retailer or a hotel or anyone that provides a visitor related service to have information there so that they'll that'll be the first place hopefully our visitors will go mayor I'm thinking if Stillwater PD's ask you to lock your doors it's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> Can we listen? <laughs> I think that's wise, and I think, yes, I would listen as well. I like the new sign, too. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'll just share something a little bit funny. The people that stop in and think they're stopping in at the Stillwater Vision Center, <laughs> Vision Center. obviously don't have their glasses on. <laughs> but that's happened numerous times. <laughs> Great. Is the Stillwater Vision Center paying you something to die? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we know, we know exactly how to tell them to get there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm thinking maybe there's a kickback there. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like they need to go get their ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could have a free bus to take them. So, yeah, I never. Yeah. <laughs> anything I don't have else? Anything. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. Thank great. you. Great. Thank you. Okay, item B, update on the evaluation of the urban planner proposal for downtown redevelopment project, Mr. Galloway. Okay, um, the uh, CDAC had a subcommittee and uh, as you know, we had several proposals originally. We got down to five and then we screened a little further and we've been um, really looking very hard at three final uh, companies. Um, Friesen Nichols, ADG, and Beck Design are the three companies we've been looking at. The subcommittee um, has called them for some additional information. We've talked to several of the references. We have discussed it with the uh, CDAC committee on Wednesday. Last week, um, Mayor Noble was there. Uh, we've discussed it a little bit, a um, lot of information to digest, and I think at that point <coughs> we're we had anticipated handing all that off to the city council so you could start vetting that this evening. Uh, there were some questions that came up. We're gathering a little more information. And between now and the time that you meet again, uh, the subcommittee is going to offer some opportunity to get uh, together with council members and let you really ask any questions that we have not uh, thought of or vetted and um, get that back to you. Uh, our next regular meeting is on a Thursday, and so we're, we, one of the difficulties tonight is we don't have all five councilor members here, or trustees here. And we would really, this is one of those issues that is so far looking, we'd like to have all five trustees uh, involved in the final discussion. We only have four this evening. And uh, part of the problem, our next regular meeting is that uh, in September, so Thursday the 10th, yes. Okay. And I think we're only gonna have four again. So uh, we're, we're trying to look at whether maybe a, a special meeting before then or something, we don't wanna delay this any further and we're, we're right trying to come up with something. We can, yeah. Yeah. So we don't, we don't have an answer yet on the date, but uh, hopefully we'll look at something um, before then if we can find a time that we can all get together. We're working hard on it. I really appreciate the uh, CDAC members who have spent an inordinate, uh, an inordinate amount of time researching and uh, figuring this out to be able to uh, hand it over to counselors. So uh, I would rather be cautious and know everything than to rush through it and to have all five of us to be able to uh, talk a talk about it so it's soon very soon just we're, we're just not quite there yet I don't suppose we would be able to meet next Monday night I mean there's still one more for Monday and we can't okay no, we got conflicts that night so. 
Any other discussion? <coughs> no, oh, no, we have one more item. Sorry, 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 sorry. So we need to talk about the uh, consideration and possible approval of a business <coughs> development incentive agreement in the bid number bid district area for Showplace Market Incorporated retail sales business. Yeah, we're excited about that. Uh, it's been several months since we've had a, a startup incentive agreement in our business district, but we've had a dozen of them over the years, been very, very successful. Uh, we started talking with uh, Jennifer Campbell of mm. Showplace Market, Showplace Market, very successful uh, store in Moore, Oklahoma. It's a um, large area that has multiple vendors inside, kind of a mini mart, if you will. Um, they had applied for the incentive grant. They looked at Stillwater real seriously, thought the market's great here, and particularly wanted to be downtown. They had trouble finding some space downtown. We had a draft agreement, which I shared with the, the council when we first talked to them. So we've been working diligently with them. And uh, fortunately, <clears throat> well, unfortunately, we lost a business downtown. J.W. Lee's is going out of business. But the good news is it won't go dark because uh, Showplace Market has signed a, a sublease to be able to move into that facility with a new business. Um, I've looked at all of their financial reports, their uh, business pro forma, and I think that over a period of seven years, uh, the 1% uh, tax rebate in arrears uh, if they would, would uh, generate up to $50,000 or seven years, whichever comes first. Uh, I, that's very typical in our agreements. Uh, again, there's no cost to us out of the, the general fund. Uh, this is all sharing new revenue. So um, this proposal, uh, the, the, the agreement, we have reviewed it. Uh, Mr. Dorman has reviewed it. Uh, I've submitted it to um, Mrs. Campbell. She's signed those agreements. We have those here. This is the same document I have shared with council. It's the same. Uh, form we've used with our other businesses as well. So I would I would strongly recommend that we that the trustees approve this uh, sales tax incentive agreement with uh, Market Showplace Showplace Market. As I was listening, th and I think you said it right there at the end. This arrangement or deal is consistent with all the other bid district deals that we've done yes, downtown. Yes. Right. We've kind of we we. How is uh, it different? Yeah. These, the, this one's always. This was in, um, only in arrears. After we document how much sales tax that right. they generate, then they get a share of it back. We have had some some of our projects in downtown where we did them an advance loan. And we've kind of discontinued those. Those those are a little more difficult to manage. So we're we're doing strictly the in arrears rebate. After you generate every quarter, we'll look at how much they generate during that quarter. This new sales tax, and then we'll share a por portion of it back. Uh, over a period of seven years, or a grand total of fifty thousand, whichever comes first. And that's the cap. So, well, I can speak from a personal standpoint of yeah. having a personal business that that did that. It was certainly was helpful, and I'm pleased to know that a business um, the size of JW Lee's building, that a business such a like this right. is going to go in there and fill that space, and, and it seems like appropriate fit for that space. So. It is. So yeah, I believe I believe the Zanotti's wine bar was probably the first uh, incentive agreement we had several years ago, back in 07. I'm torn, so I need some selling from someone up here, but in my mind, and I'm glad you talked about Zanotti's, so I can use that as an example. <laughs> when Zanotti's came, it was something we didn't have, and it was something that brought, I think, I guess, life downtown. When I think of this, the first thing that pops in my mind is it's already coming, so we're not trying to incentivize them to come here. They've already signed a lease. And so, in my mind, when I think of an incentive, I think of something to draw them here. And if they've already decided they're coming in, they've already signed a lease, I don't know why we need to incentivize them. Well, the, the agreement was negotiated long before they ever found a place. I mean, you know, I don't have the authority to final approve an agreement. But when a business comes and looks for a place downtown and they come and share with me their business plan, their financials, and it appears uh, everything in that plan that this uh, incentive agreement will make their project workable. Then they move ahead in good faith and anticipation and hopes that the council will approve the agreement. Now, if they were, it's kind of a chicken and egg. Uh, I think it would be inappropriate to sign an agreement when they have no place secured to open. 
if you signed agreement and there's no location to put in the contract and hold them accountable to a specific location, then it's not a good agreement. So what we've always done in the past is they have to, we, we negotiate the terms and then it's requisite before I put it on the agenda, they have to secure the, the space for the business. And then in the agreement, because the agreement says that you have to open your business in a specific location that you've secured. And there's also a provision in the agreement that at any point that business ceases at that specific address, then the, the contract is null and void. So you have to wait till they have a lease signed or a piece of property purchased, one or the other, so they can guarantee in, when they sign this document, this is where we're going to be. If they signed it in anticipation and then the tenant for some reason didn't fulfill the lease agreement next week, then it's all backwards. So we usually, we negotiate it first, they have to come to us, make us aware of the project first. All of that information has to be provided to the city before they ever make a decision, which this company did. And that's what happened, they provided information to yes. you before they ever even thought about searching for yeah. When I take it from a little bit, I mean, for incentive meant a little bit different for us. We were pretty determined to be located downtown. And so for us, that was definitely going to have the right location and all of that. And so the incentive for us was more on a business side of it of, okay, this is, how is this going to help us as we open our doors for the first time and get us through the first few years and help, help with the financial part of it. So if it's null and void, uh, it's null and void from the date that they are no longer oh, if they if they close business, then it's, then it's the do they have the to terminus. give anything back at that point, or it's just just null and void? No, because them? they don't have nothing to give back because we haven't given them anything in advance. Okay. Uh, so if 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 we've made fifteen thousand dollars in sales tax and we've given them five and we've kept ten, uh, that the deal is continually honored. Every time you make a payment to them, they're you're current. There's, there is no advance payment to the applicant. I think we've proven the concept by virtue of the success of downtown. Oh, yeah. it's, and it's, the bid district is well known. These grants, we've made numbers of them. The previous ones you mentioned where we actually advanced the money really wasn't the concept that we originally started with. And the idea of giving them money in arrears to help keep their business doors open and get them through that rough early start, I think is a it's a proven concept, so I'm fully a, a I, I will say the trustee Nahara makes a real good point because we've had a, a, a few cases, uh, and it's very, very difficult. We've had a couple of cases where uh, someone has quietly come into the downtown, they've secured a lease, they've put their remodeling in and put in their line of goods, and they're open for a month or two, and then they come to City Hall and say, oh, by the way, we heard you have this incentive program. I want to apply. Sorry, incentive means just that. It means something to help you make your final decision to move into downtown. It's not, it's not an entitlement. If you do it after the fact, then it's looked at as an entitlement. So um, again, and I agree with you 100%. We only, we only offer this to businesses that come in and communicate with us very early in the process. So we have a chance to look at the business plan with them, look at the rent with them, and, and make sure that it's a viable project. I'm very happy you're doing the in arrears now. I, I like that yeah. much better. Sure That's, do uh, I, don't, I don't think we've ever done, uh, well, we, we did a couple of loans, but even, even our TIF, TIF district is in arrears. Mm -hmm. We don't make anything for the TIF district, they don't get anything. It's, we, never, we never write checks out of the bank and <laughs> give anybody anything in advance. Mm -hmm. Counselors, do uh, anyone, does anyone have a motion? A motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, the business incentive for Showplace Market. Please vote. And that passes with a vote of three to one with Councilor Nahara voting no. And with that, I ask if there is a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Please vote. And we are adjourned from the Store Economic Development Authority meeting at 624. Meeting is closed.
Have a good evening. Wow. Wow.